business staying on that subject for the press review dipped is joining us here on set to carry on the joy and excitement around the Queen's 70 years of British monarch, uh, it's dominating the papers and Dipti is taking us through it. Is it royal fever? It is, indeed, it is indeed royal fever. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of uh, adoring uh, headlines in the British papers mm. today. A lifetime of service and quiet devotion, brave, strong and utterly sh unshockable. A grateful nation salute to ma'am. That's what the Daily uh, Express says, a conservative albeit royalist paper, uh, rather adoringly says on its front page. A four-day party, of course, is well underway in the UK. Stuart, for our Queen, uh, for our Britain, uh, the Daily Mirror says uh, patriotically on its front page, this is a, a photo of celebrations outside um, Buckingham Palace. The Sun wishing the British monarch a happy platinum jubilee. Don't you just love her? Uh, a uh, reference to that... Clever. <laughs> yeah, reference uh, to that royal cipher, ER actually standing for Elizabeth Regina. Regina is Latin for Queen. Uh, there's also an incredible collage of uh, Queen Elizabeth photos on uh, the front page of the I today, an unprecedented moment in British history marked by a weekend of partying. It says 70 not out, an obvious reference uh, to a very British sport, cricket. Um, even the usually acerbic British Illustrated Press are very adoring today as well. Uncharacteristically, uh, a platinum jubilee celebration from the uh, Daily Telegraph's cartoonist Patrick Blower, of course, in the form of the Union Jack there. Um, France is staunchly republic, and yet they're still very much behind the Queen and today. That's right. They do love, uh, they do love the Queen for some reason. Uh, I think they find it all very uh, interesting and uh, beguiling. So much so that she's on the front of a couple of French papers today, actually. Uh, Le Parisien pays tribute to Queen Elizabeth. Chapeau, it says, hats off to you, an historic moment. Um, 70 years as Queen, Le Parisien tells us that seven times longer than Charles de Gaulle was president. Uh, she uh, has seen through Churchill and Kennedy, Mao and Mandela, Obama and Thatcher, Gorbachev and Indira Gandhi. Um, she's seen it all. She's actually outlived most of them as well, Le Parisien's editors say. Uh, for the conservative paper, Le Figaro, they're also uh, looking at her on their front page, uh, again, calling it a historic reign. But they're perhaps the only paper who's uh, looking at also sort of the dark side or the downside of the British monarchy, the turbulent times uh, that have engulfed her recently, notably her ailing health. We've seen that with uh, the fewer and fewer uh, public engagements that she's undertaking, the death of her late husband, Prince Philip, paedophilia, accusations against her son, Prince Andrew, and of course, uh, the um, dramatic exit from the royal family by Prince Harry and Meghan. Uh, she's nonetheless a queen exhausted by t a turbulent monarchial reign. There's another story that's dominating the papers as well. This is a reaction to that verdict from the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard defamation trial. Well, it's uh, uh, garnering a lot of opinion, paper, uh, uh, opinion pieces today, uh, Stuart. An orgy of misogyny, that's how this writer from The Guardian puts it. She calls a verdict, quote, strange, illogical and unjust, uh, which has the effect of sanctioning Johnny Depp's alleged abuse of Amber Heard and of punishing her for speaking up about it. In a sense, this writer says, uh, because of this verdict, women's speech has actually taken a step back, that it's become a lot less free, uh, while a New York Times writer says, that the overwhelming feeling is that there is no winner out of this trial. Not since a long time has a case involving domestic violence ac accusations been treated like a spectator sport where we comment on it, where it's been, Amber Heard's been memed and mocked online, ridiculed. Uh, the writer deplores the fact that the trial actually says more about us as a public, that we are no closer to being the kind of culture that does not salivate over watching a woman being brought solo. Yeah, interesting way of looking at it. Now, finally, let's stay on the topic of celebrity. This is a new fashion trend, uh, once reserved for underwear, which is now becoming outerwear. Are there pictures to go with it? Yes, there are pictures. <laughs> okay, um, right. I didn't ask them to blur it. So OK, be <laughs> There's careful. There's nothing to blur, actually. Um, uh, it, right. Don't worry, this trend doesn't, absolutely does not uh, involve you. I mean, it could if you wanted to, but it doesn't really occur. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I can see. It's, right. it's a nipple pasty, you know, the kind of pimped out adhesives that cover a woman's nipples while bearing pretty much oh. everything else of her okay. breast, uh, a trend that really arose from the burlesque industry and, and sort of uh, the pasties became known as boob jewellery and mm. it sort of became a, a statement in itself. Um, the Guardian tells us that, you know, celebrities have been wearing pasties forever, but they us usually were underneath something. Mm. Um, it turns out now that nipple pasties 
are the fashion itself. Perhaps it's a political statement, you know, drawing attention, for instance, to the double standards about the sexualization of topless women and the normalization of topless men. Or maybe it's just a trend, you know, we had under boob, we had side boobs, and now maybe the humble <laughs> nipple is getting its 15 minutes of fashion fame. You've got to find something, haven't they, to change things. Exactly. I, I wouldn't recommend it for tomorrow's press. No, room. don't worry. No, okay. There's no risk of that happening here. No, from, from this <laughs> side either. <laughs> Dipti, thank you very much. Dipti Kerr, Laura with the paper. She'll be back in a few hours' time.